Joining me now from the Zero Touch Automation Congress in Madrid is Helmut Zerner, who is Senior Manager, Virtual Network Products Europe at Verizon. Helmut, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Why do service providers such as Verizon need Zero Touch Automation? Yeah, I think we should first maybe provide a definition of what Zero Touch is and then see if we can test some assumptions. Based on that, uh, I, I think um, we can agree that Zero Touch is all about deploying uh, services in an efficient, predictable and automated way. Uh, no matter what the service is, as, as long as we talk here network and security, just as an example, right? So that's the business that we talk here about. So um, as a result of that, there is, of course, the, let's say, the operator or service provider view of Zero Touch. And uh, it is, of course, then also the customer view of Zero Touch. So I think um, one of the, the strong drivers for, for us doing what we do is, uh, on the one hand, um, optimizing processes internally, uh, launching new services faster, uh, time to market is key. But at the other end, we want to provide a unique customer experience by doing customers' lives easier, helping them to optimize their business processes. So uh, there are two aspects of this, right? And we will see later that maybe the definition also requires some fine tuning because there is a zero touch definition as complexity grows that is more um, touching on deploying services. There is another one maybe potentially that spans operational aspects and so on. So it, it really depends uh, if you look at the full end-to-end -end service chain or just as a single task. Are we therefore adding additional complexity here? I, I think we need to acknowledge that um, when we deploy services and when we apply zero touch, it is not so much the individual building block that is so, so in other words, it is not so much about the technological aspects of this. Customers are not so much addicted to technology. It's more, it's, it's more the business outcome for them, right? We want to do this to deliver a unique experience, as I said. It's about the real-time enterprise, helping our customers to gain efficiencies. And as such, of course, we have to do the full service chain and we have to, to, to optimize and we have to apply zero touch with the full service in mind. Of course, is a full service now more complex than an individual element. Yeah, so uh, that, that is not a black and white uh, answer to this question. It pretty much depends and we have to acknowledge that fact. And then we can see where the complexity is and we can deal with that. What stage are we at in the development and deployment of zero touch automation? both as an industry and as Verizon? Yeah, uh, Verizon um, is, is now, uh, when we again, we talk about uh, the, the area that I represent, so managed network services and security services. We are in year four on a journey. So we started four years ago uh, with our first sd one services. We have added then purpose-built uh, managed services, which are on so-called gray boxes. Then we have launched our virtual network services where uh, we have universal CPEs that we can deploy. We have uh, cloud-based solutions that are all um, um, more or less being automated and managed by the same principles. So our environment to do this is consistent. We want to, to launch and, and give our customers predictable service experience again. So we launched last year uh, Zero Touch provisioning, which, which is helping customers to a great extent to, to have more control about how they see us delivering the service by giving some of the, the elements uh, into the automation. They gain efficiencies on their side, uh, for example, by deciding uh, what is the right point in time to deploy a service. They don't need, for example, to wait for somebody from Verizon to join them on site. This is just a simple example. Now, where is the industry? I think it is important to acknowledge that, of course, we have various aspects here and various stages and depending where you look at and where in this ecosystem and end-to-end -end service chain that I was talking about, what, what do you have in mind? The big picture is great, but we must acknowledge that we can be only successful here. And that was, was a kind of, common, of a common theme today in, in the talk so far. We have to put solutions out. We have to take smaller bits and pieces while keeping the big picture in mind, but make sure we deliver stuff. We launch products. We, we have customer feedback incorporated at the same time. And I think we do quite well in that space. 
What have been some of the major challenges you've come up against? So I, I think, uh, again, to the point of talking here about an ecosystem, if we can divide this into, into two dimensions, right? There is, there is first of all the horizontal dimension where, where this is not just about the CPE or about any other particular element. We have a transport here that is part of the service. We have uh, potentially CPEs. We have our partners, so the, so the uh, uh, vendors we work with. We potentially have operating system vendors. Um, we, we, have, um, we have here a, a, a various number of stakeholders and that is what making the ecosystem to a certain, yeah, we talked about complexity, to a certain aspect, um, it, it's expanding the, the initial scope. And again, once you acknowledge that, so this, there is, this is trivial, but you cannot only automate what you understand. So, so understanding is the first challenge, right? And then, then, then it is flowing, it, it is flowing quite smoothly. And then we have, of course, the vertical, uh, 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 dimension, which is making sure that from the appliance top down to the transport, APIs, uh, all the bits and pieces that, that make a service, including reporting analytics and artificial intelligence capabilities, that that is also part of the same ecosystem and uh, is uh, benefiting from automation and the principles that come with that. So as a CSP, what do you need from the wider vendor ecosystem that would help you with your implementation and development of Zero Touch? Last year, we spoke a bit about uh, licensing. So we talk about principles of automation that require automation to go beyond the scope of a CPE. That, that is, again, a trivial example. So we have these elements that make the wider ecosystem uh, and licensing was one part of them. And we said we need to be flexible in that space as well. And that includes, of course, putting a license next to an application. So uh, flexibility there, which is more the commercial part of it. Yeah, but we. We acknowledge now and, and we have to, to, to make sure that this is, this is a really a part of the common sense, the environment, the standards that lifecycle management, for example, for, for licenses and the way how we restore a service, how we deal with licenses, how we have people maybe in operations managing licenses. So for example, you have full automation. Yeah, it's, it, there is no point in having individuals and accessing stuff via portal and doing things manually. So, so this whole this whole model that that makes up license management um, is something that has to be efficient, as efficient as possible. Which also means that because we have um, choice, yeah, that's one of our of our product capabilities. Uh, we have, of course, various solutions that we have to deal with. So, uh, having in this space good standards and. Uh, um, Incorporation of those and, um, is, is maybe another requirement. Helmut, thank you very much indeed. You are welcome. Thank you.